Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to another video in the series of React Native. In case you are not aware of it, we are putting up a full-fledged series with the portfolio apps right here on the YouTube, sponsored by Hashnerd. More about them in a minute, but first, welcome to the series and in this video we are going to explore the file structure and all the files that are given to us by React Native. In case you haven't watched the previous video, go watch previously all those videos. We have helped everyone so that they can do a setup of the environment. Regardless if you're on a Mac, Windows or Linux, we have helped each other out. And in fact, we have a very helpful community as well. In fact, our community has gone ahead and written a lot of articles about how you can get started with this on Hashnode, with the React Native app, how you can install them on Linux, Ubuntu, and a whole lot of them. And they are constantly writing these articles. So I would love to feature a lot of them here. All of these are articles written by the people who are watching this series and I highly recommend you to create an account on Hashnode and just write an article with the hashtag React Native. That's all the price that you have to pay for this particular series. Now moving back, in this video we are going to explore the file system and the file architecture that is given to us by React Native. That is absolutely simple and we are going to make this one. So again, go ahead and check out our Hashnode as well. I'll talk about them later on as well. But first, let's come here. So, so far in this journey, we were able to generate a basic React Native project and we were able to run it on our classic old Android device. In case you want to run it on emulator, iOS device, Android device, that is also 100% fine. But one thing I would like to mention that throughout this series, I will be using React Native CLI and not the Expo. In case you want to go with your Expo path, feel free, you are welcome. But in majority of the cases and high-end apps, CLI is used. So throughout this application, throughout this course, I will be using React Native CLI. Expo is easy to set up, but in the longer run, you should be struggling a little bit. So go ahead and work on with CLI. In this video, let's explore the file that are all given to us. Now, at the very first time, if anybody sees all of this file structure that we have in React Native, he's going to see, oh, that's too much. Will I able to see this? Will I able be able to understand what is all going on? But trust me, after watching this video, it will be all super easy. The best part about the React Native is you don't have to mess around too much with all the files. In fact, we'll be removing all the major important files and we'll be recreating them eventually. So let's explore one by one and try to understand which are the key files where you should keep your eye on and which one you can totally ignore. The first one being the test folders. Now, of course, every application needs to be tested out. So this is something where the testers are going to work through. React Native by default these days provide a TypeScript support, so that's why you're going to see all the file at TSX. Now again, the best part about the TSX file is, even if you don't know TypeScript, you can still work on with them because your JavaScript knowledge is only required, so we're going to be working through that. Here are some of the test cases that you can write. Uh, renderer, if it properly renders the app, if it, if it properly renders the buttons, are the layout same? All these things are test and these tests are being written by the testers. Throughout the series, at least in the starting of the series, we won't be focusing too much on the test because that's a different case and different course altogether. So we won't be focusing on that. Then we have these bundle. We don't have to worry about that. These are just configuration file. We never ever touch this. The two major folder that we have is the Android and the iOS. Since in the React Native world, you write your code once in just the app.js or the app.tsx file, and that code is finally being moved into the iOS world and the Android world. It's kind of a simulated version there. But don't worry, it's not a web view app, it's a proper full-fledged app. So first, let's explore the Android. Now the Android, there are chances that probably like 95% of the time you will never go into this folder. This is just there so that all the configuration can be linked via your React Native app and your Android app works fine. But there are special cases where you will be coming into this folder and will be checking few things. For example, the first one being build.gradle. This is, the pie, this is the file where you simply go ahead and check your dependencies, uh, your build, which is the minimum version of the SDK you are supporting and all of that. So sometimes in the longer run, you might have to come up here and to check out these things, especially what version of a minimum you are supporting and what is your targeted SDK version for the device you are working on. So this is one thing where you'll be coming. Another place where you might be coming up here is this dependencies. Sometimes we have to add dependencies manually based on what packages we are installing. So because of that, we have to come in this file. And sometimes, I remember, I repeat this again, only sometimes we have to come and repeat this again. Another file which is important to run the Android apps is locale.properties. So make sure you always come here 
Sometimes in some system, these files are not directly generated. So you have to manually come this. And as we saw in the Discord community, some people already got this file, so they don't have to do anything. People have discussed greatly in depth about what to do when it is Android, what it's to do in Windows, in Mac, in Linux, all of them. And we have written great articles there. In case you need support, check out our Discord server. All right, so this is all you need. In case, apart from this, you never ever touch anything. For example, in the app, we have this source and we have main, we have Java files and we have main activity and application. We never touch this. Everything is linked via our app.js. So through this, all the things are being fetched into the architecture. We never ever touch these files in the React Native. So that's the good news. You don't have to worry too much. Similarly, in case you are working for the iOS specific apps and you're very much worried about that, you can simply open up the iOS and the only file which you'll be touching majorly is the pod file. Now pod file in the world of iOS is the file where you install all of your dependencies, all of your new packages, everything comes up here. So that's why this file is important. This pod file is everything meat and part of the iOS app. In case you haven't checked out, I do have an iOS course as well uh, on Udemy. So make sure in case you want, you can check it out. Otherwise, we never come onto this one. So again, iOS is really simple, only just one file, nothing else. Uh, rest is all taken care of by React Native. Then we have this Node module folder. Since our entire application is based on Node and the JavaScript, we require Node modules. A lot of dependencies are there and that's all dependencies is installed in the Node modules. We have also noticed in our Discord server that sometimes there are issues while updating all these files. So in case there are some issues, go ahead and remove the Node modules file and then reinstall the package. How we can do that? It's really simple. Go ahead and first open this up. Make sure when you do pwd present working directory, uh, then you simply are inside this folder. And that simply means you, if you do an ls, you should be able to see the package.json file. This is really important. I saw a lot of people struggling with that on our Discord. So make sure when you do an ls, you are able to see this file. Some people were running these commands outside of this project folder. So please make sure you are aware of that. All you have to do is simply say npm and then install. That's all. And this node underscore module folder will be recreated for you. So that's all you have to do. That's all you have to worry about. So I told you, these folders looks really long and really big, but they are not really. They are super easy to work on with. Now, after that, we have got some limiting configuration and some ignore files. What happens is obviously you want to put these files into portfolio as well. Now, during this portfolio, a lot of these files can be regenerated as well. So in that case, we really don't want some files to be pushed up. For example, the bundlers, we really don't want to push. The Node.js module folder, we don't want to be pushed up there. Uh, some files like locale.properties also should be avoided totally. So these all are mentioned in the git ignore so that they don't go onto git repository. Maybe you're using GitHub, GitLab, whatever you're using. Now, after that, we have got some prettier configuration. As of now, there is nothing inside the prettier configuration that is too much heavy. It's just simply saying that, hey, uh, some parentheses are there, some spacing configuration. This is just for the developer specification. This has nothing to do when the code files actually goes into production. This is just for the ease of the developer. Then we have some Ruby versioning. A lot of this has to do with the iOS versioning as well. So just for the specific iOS use case, these Ruby versioning are being used. You can go ahead and change them as well. No problem at all. Then we don't have any Watchman configuration. Like Watchman is simply a simple tool which constantly re-updates your UI or re uh, kind of a loads your application, whatever the code you are writing, and shows that on the devices. Right now, we don't have any, but surely in the major case, we can actually provide some configuration. Then we have this app JSON. Now, this is where all the files are linked. Your Android takes the name of the application from here. Your iOS also takes your name of the application from here. So this is the major configuration file. In React Native, majority of the configuration files are with the JSON and hence here is the same case that we have. So simply really nothing much to be worried about. Then we have this app.tsx, not to be confused with app.json. App.json is a simple display configuration that we have and app.tsx is the file where all the meat and potato of this. In the next video, we'll be having directly talk onto this one really in depth. In fact, we'll be removing everything and we'll be talking with that. And this is the file which actually brings everything on the screen. Yes, this only one file. So I told you, there are so many files, but we all care about is just one file. This is the major file which actually does every of the views and whatever is available there. Now we have this Babel configuration. 
Now, what happens in the world of JavaScript is JavaScript doesn't know that how these files are being run on these mobile devices or even how these files are being splitted into different files and we have to combine them. So for that, we need some kind of a bundler which actually combines all of our file and uh, just make them one file available to everyone. So this is where React Native used Babel configuration and in the Babel, we use Metro configuration. I'll talk about that in the later on videos as well. And I'll definitely give you a brief documentation tour about the Metro as well. All you need to know for the interview purpose later on as well, that just like there are a lot of bundlers which combines all of your JavaScript file and make it available and runnable for the browsers and for mobile, we use Metro in React Native. That's all you have to do right now. Now, same file goes for the gem file. It's again a Ruby based file, majorly for the CocoaPods and for iOS development. We again never touch this file as well. Then we have this index file. Now, obviously right now, out of the box, your React Native doesn't know which file to load up. App.js, component.js or component.tsx doesn't really know. So the first file, the Metro Builder, when you open up this config, it opens up this Metro Builder is this index.js file. It simply says that, hey, React Native, the first file that I'll open up is app name and I'll open this up from uh, app. This app is coming up from this dot slash app, the TSX file that we just saw. And notice here, it imports the file name from the app.json. This is where all the namings are coming up. And from line number six, this is where all of your app configuration, buttons, what to load on the screen, all these app is actually coming up and simply the app registry, this is where the magic happens. This is where all the interaction happens. The main diagram that we saw on the React Native homepage that how it converts one file into iOS and Android. Yep, this app registry is actually responsible for doing that. Then we have these Metro configuration. There is nothing too much uh, that we actually come up and change in that. In fact, in all of the apps that we'll be building, we'll never change that. Only thing we should be aware of it is that Metro is the bundler, which will help us to do all of that. All right. And the last file that we have is the TSX a TS config, which is a TypeScript configuration file. TypeScript allows you to have a strong types. So somebody needs to tell me from where should I bring all these types? And this file actually tells me that, hey, this is where you need to bring all the types. After that, we have simply the package.json. Just like in our regular React app or the Node app, we have a lot of packages and dependencies. As you can see, there's a lot of dev dependencies here. But if you look at the dependencies, there is very less of the dependencies. And that's why when you have this file up here, this is such a really big file. But when you export the build of the app, then it's a comparatively less of a file size. And yes, there are a lot of ways how you can reduce the file sizes. Maybe we can talk about them later on. But right now, I think this is a good start to get started. And here are all the scripts that we want to run in case we want to run our file on the iOS or Android or everything. So really, uh, it looks really big and gigantic. But once you have the look on this video that, hey, it's not really too much. It's really very manageable. It doesn't look that much scary. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is we are going to explore a little bit about the Metro configuration, not too much, but we'll read some of the documentation about the Metro, as well as we'll come and talk majorly about the app.tsx. This is the file which actually brings all the things which are available on the screen. So it would be a great idea that we completely entirely remove this, uh, all the details in the file and try to recreate it. That's all what we'll be doing. Now coming back on to the part of the sponsor. In case you have enjoyed this video, have understood a little bit, go ahead and try to write an article about the file structure of the React Native app and share it with the hashtag of React Native so that we can track it up here. Join our Discord server where a lot of people are helping each other to run these Android apps, uh, iOS app through the React Native. And it's a great vibrant community that we were able to build. And again, a big shout out and thanks to Hashnode for sponsoring this entire series and putting it on YouTube so that everybody can learn mobile development. That's all for this video and I'm going to catch you up in the next video.